you for coming today. I'm attorney Gloria Allred, and with me is our client, and her name is La Rivers. And I'll be making a statement, and Ms. Rivers will be making a statement, and uh, she will not be taking questions, but I will be happy to take questions. Today we filed a lawsuit in New York Supreme Court on behalf of La Rivers against Boutique, a restaurant lounge in New York City and against a boutique manager who, according to the lawsuit, assaulted Ms. River. Boutique asserts on its website that it is, quote, frequented by celebrities in entertainment and music, end quote. And after the kitchen closes, quote, becomes one of the hottest nightclubs in New York City, end quote. Although the New York Post has called Boutique New York City's, quote, newest millionaire lab, end quote, Ms. Rivers knew only that Boutique would be an opulent place to end an evening with her father and a few friends over for Father's Day weekend. She and her group had gone to Boutique to celebrate her appearance in a movie. But instead of a celebration, her night ended with Ms. Rivers becoming a victim in an assault, stepped from the entrance to the club. Ms. Rivers was seriously injured as a result of the assault, and she was left unconscious, bleeding profusely, and in need of reconstructive surgery to repair multiple fractures to her face. According to our lawsuit, on June 20th, 2015, Ms. Rivers set out for the evening with two friends and her father. Her dad was visiting her from Chicago for her father's day weekend. The group began the night at the Players Theater downtown, where they watched the premiere of a film in which Ms. Rivers acted at the Manhattan Film Festival. Ms. Rivers went to a cafe nearby for dinner and then to a post-premiere celebration. At approximately 12.30 a.m., Ms. Rivers, her father, and her friend arrived at Boutique, where they met another friend to conclude their night out. Because Ms. Rivers was hosting her father for the weekend, she had only two glasses of wine in total during the event and she was completely sober when she arrived and when she left Boutique. At approximately 2 o'clock a.m., Ms. Rivers left Boutique with her friends and her father and went to hail a taxi. As the taxi pulled up to Ms. Rivers, a Boutique manager, Edward Kyle Moffat, suddenly ran past her and attempted to open and enter the passenger side door. Ms. Rivers informed Mr. Moffat that she had hailed the taxi. Mr. Moffat, who had exited Boutique at approximately the same time as Ms. Rivers, appeared belligerent and extremely intoxicated. He started screaming angrily at Ms. Rivers, targeting her as a, quote, and I'm not going to use the full word, against the C, ends with T, and against the B, and ends with T. At one point, Mr. Moffat kicked the side of the taxi so hard that the driver emerged from the vehicle to ask Mr. Moffat what his problem was and to get him away. Ms. Rivers was standing near the taxi as Mr. Moffat's misogynistic rage kept building. Suddenly, without any warning, Mr. Moffat attacked Ms. Rivers. Mr. Moffat assaulted Ms. Rivers with such force that she fell immediately to the ground and was knocked unconscious. Because the attack came without warning, Ms. Rivers hit the ground face first, unable to brace her fall, and her face and head bore the brunt of the landing. Ms. Rivers awoke with her friends and bystanders around her. Blood was streaming out of her nose, a black eye forming, and an enormous contusion on her forehead. Ms. Rivers had dressed nicely for the celebratory night out in five-inch heels and dress, but her clothing was covered in blood and water from hitting the wet ground. For these reasons, we have filed a lawsuit today against both Boutique and the manager who assaulted Ms. Rivers, alleging battery and assault. In addition, we allege negligent screening, hiring and retention, and negligence against the Boutique defendants. We're seeking damages according to proof at trial. Of particular concern to us is that the manager, Mr. Edward Kyle Moffat, had criminal convictions prior to his assault of Ms. Rivers. 
According to the Office of Court Administration for the New York State Unified Court System, among other criminal convictions, Mr. Moffat had been convicted of assault and related offenses in New York prior to his assault of Ms. Rivers. Notwithstanding Mr. Moffat's violent past, which apparently was so notorious that it was known to the police and which was easily discoverable from a criminal background check, Boutique employed Mr. Co Edward Kyle Moffat as a manager. We allege in our lawsuit that Boutique also allowed Mr. Moffat to become heavily intoxicated at its establishment, which contributed to his belligerence and misogynistic violence. As a result of the assault, Ms. Rivers suffered a concussion and four broken bones in her nose that required reconstructive surgery, MRI tests, and numerous trips to medical professionals. Ms. Rivers also has endured excruciating headaches and difficulty sleeping. The assault impaired Ms. Rivers' ability to work as an actress because her work depends on her appearance and presentation for her livelihood. The incident also impacted Ms. Rivers emotionally, causing her to become fearful of sudden attacks and embarrassed and scared of being seen with alarming injuries to her face. In connection with Mr. Moffitt's conduct described above, the New York County District Attorney charged him with criminal assault in the third degree, attempted assault in the third degree, and harassment in the second degree. The criminal case against Mr. Moffitt in connection with the incident with Ms. Rivers is now pending in New York criminal court in New York County. Ms. Rivers and I are speaking out today because we believe that a business has a duty to protect its patrons from the action of its managers. This nightclub profits from its customers and it should take responsibility for the behavior of its managers, whether that behavior occurred inside or outside of the restaurant as patrons are leaving. Patrons need to be protected as they enter the restaurant and as they depart from it. The club's responsibility does not start and end at their door. We look forward to Ms. Rivers having her day in court. And before we go to Ms. Rivers, we do have a, a copy of the lawsuit and we have provided that to you. And it was filed this morning and it has its case number, its index number at the top. And so that, that was filed this morning. And the court, which is behind us.
I got learned that night. Violent men like my attacker exist in even the most posh and seemingly safe places in the neighborhood. Since this happened, I find myself feeling doubtful. I don't trust that I'll be protected in social settings where I don't know people, so I avoid them. For me, this is a new feeling. I was fearless before last year, and now I'm constantly worrying and suspicious of my surroundings. I haven't slept much for my last two. The feeling of danger Inside edition, can you go away? Thank you. A lot more followers. So you're going to be okay. That is crazy. You're going to have like 10,000 more followers on Instagram. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is excessive cruelty to somebody like that's unbelievable. Oh, like, oh, yeah. I just like, yeah. Yeah. 